In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to convert between frame rates. First, we're going to use progressive to progressive. We're going to start with 30 frames per second to 24 frames per second and go over NTSC to PAL using interlaced footage. You can use this technique for any other progressive to progressive material conversion. In this first example, we will be using footage from the new Canon 5D Mark II, but it only records at 30p. This is where Twixter can come in. First, let's see how Final Cut Pro handles this without Twixter. I have a number on each frame. If I create a new sequence, let's call this FCP. Now I can go to Settings and just change the frame rate to 24 frames per second. We can now drop our original 30 frames per second shot onto the 24 frame per second timeline. This is just using Final Cut Pro without Twixter. You can see as I advance through each frame that it has dropped frames in order to keep the same duration. If we want to convert this 30 frames per second footage to 24 frames per second, it is easy to map frames on a one-to-one -one basis, but if we do this, we will have a speed change. If we want to maintain the same duration in both frame rates, then we can have Cinema Tools conform the frame rate from 30 frames per second to 24 frames per second and add Twixter to finish the process by restoring the duration to the original length in Twixter by actually synthesizing smartly interpolated new frames that will give us a much smoother result. Here are the steps we need to follow for this 30 frames per second to 24 frames per second conversion. Step 1. Make a copy of our original shot on disk using the finder. We'll need the original later because we will need to use the audio from the original to replace the audio that will be altered within the frame rate conversion process. Step 2. Start Cinema Tools, which comes with Final Cut Studio and is located in your Applications folder. Step 3. If you haven't created a database before, simply select Create New Database and then hit Continue. Accept the default settings for database. Step 4. Select File Open Clip. Open the copy of the movie you made in Step 1 and after it is opened, click on the Conform button in the window where the movie is displayed. Change the frame rate to the desired frame rate, in this case 24. Then hit the Conform button after changing the frame rate. You may now exit Cinema Tools. What we have done will cause the copy of the movie to play each frame of the original movie at the new frame rate, making it longer or shorter. This will also make the audio longer or shorter, which is why we are changing the frame rate on a copy of the movie, so we can use the original audio within Final Cut Pro that is within the original movie. Step 5. Open Final Cut Pro and bring in the original and the clip we just modified in Cinema Tools. We will create an interim sequence with our new clip as we have seen in previous tutorials. Place enough copies of the clip so that it is as long as the original in duration. The duration may be shorter than the original because we've conformed the original footage to a different frame rate, but are playing each frame from the original. Step 6. Create a new sequence called Final Sequence and drop the interim sequence onto its timeline. Step 7. Now let's add Twixter and see how Twixter can easily finish the conversion process by changing the duration back to the original length while still keeping the new frame rate of 24 frames per second. We can go to the Filter tab in the Viewer. Let's leave the display on Twixtered output. We're going to use the Speed option and change the speed to 125%. The way I got this number is 100 times 30, the old frame rate, divided by 24, the new frame rate. 
Step 8. We can trim the shot back to the original length and add the original audio back now that the shot is back to the original length. Now we will render our sequence and take a look at our result compared to the result we got just using Final Cut Pro without Twixter. As you can see, the Twixter result is smoother with no dropped frames. So this is how to do a simple frame rate conversion from 30 frames per second to 24 frames per second using Twixter in Final Cut Pro. Next, we will do a frame rate conversion between 2997 and 25, and either the source or the destination or both are interlaced clips. Step 1. Same as before, make a copy of our original. Step 2. Same as before, except our desired frame rate this time is 25 frames per second. Step 3. Open Final Cut Pro and include both original NTSC movie and the NTSC conform movie into your project bin. Create a new sequence. We'll call it NTSC interim sequence and drop NTSC conform movie into it. When asked to change the sequence settings to match the clip settings, answer yes. Copy and paste the clip a second time to create the interim sequence like we saw in previous tutorials. Step 4. Now create another new sequence and call this one FIN PAL. Now drop the interim sequence onto the timeline for FIN PAL. If asked, match the settings for the final sequence based on the interim sequence. Apply Twixter. Step 5. Hit return and go to the filter tab in the viewer. Now here's the trick. Set Twixter's speed percentage to the formula we saw before. So that's 100 times the old frame rate divided by the new frame rate. So in this case it would be 100 times 2997 divided by 25 which equals 119.88. Step 6. You will want to go to the bin and select Find PAL Sequence and right mouse click or option click for one button mouse users and go to the settings for Final PAL Sequence. In the general tab you will want to make sure that the frame rate is set to the new frame rate we are converting to, so in this case 25. You will go to the drop down menu and choose CCIR 601 slash DV PAL 5 to 4 aspect ratio for rectangular pixels and CCIR 601 PAL 4 to 3 aspect ratio if the delivery calls for square pixels. You also need to set the pixel aspect ratio and then choose whichever field dominance the delivery calls for. I'm going to leave this one on lower. Step 7. If the original clip is in TSC and the final result is PAL, then this means that your interim sequences settings will reflect NTSC frame size and pixel aspect ratio and the final sequence settings will reflect PAL frame size and pixel aspect ratio. This might mean that the original clip will not fit into the resulting final frame size. If this is the case, play with the scale settings in the motion tab in the viewer until the original clip fills the final sequences frame as you desire. There is no hard and fast rule as to what the scale factor should be. Make sure to set the scale on the interim sequence within the final sequence and not the original clip itself. Step 8. You may have noticed that the audio from the original conform movie has been slowed down or sped up, which is not what is desired. So in the final sequence, replace the audio with the audio from original NTSC movie which is the original audio without any slowdown or speed 
up that the conforming process has introduced. It is at this point you'll want to trim the interim sequence within the final sequence's timeline to be the same duration as the audio from the original NTSC movie. This is where Final Cut Pro's snap feature comes in handy. Otherwise, you may see the original clip repeat itself within the final sequence. Okay, that's it. Now we can render the sequence and take a look at the result. Now we've seen how to do a frame rate conversion from 30p to 24p and also NTSC to PAL. You can use these methods as a base to do other frame rate conversions.